We spend a lot of our time talking, but are we really talking about what matters? Donate Life is asking you to have a conversation that many people try to avoid. Do you want to donate your organs and tissue when you die? Organ donation is not as simple as you may think. Only a small percentage of people who die can actually become organ donors. So it's really important that your family knows your wishes, and you know theirs, to maximise the number of potential organ and tissue donors. Why can't everyone donate? Firstly, you need to die in an intensive care unit in a hospital. Organs deteriorate quickly once you die because they lack oxygen. This means they won't be healthy enough to donate if you die elsewhere. But that's all right. Don't lots of people die in a hospital? There are very specific criteria that need to be met before someone can donate. In reality, only 1% of people who die in hospital are potential organ donors. 1%? That's not many. Yes, it's not many. Organ donation can only occur when a person is legally declared dead by either irreversible cessation of all function of the brain of the person or irreversible cessation of circulation of blood in the body of the person. So, brain death occurs when the brain is so badly damaged that it permanently stops functioning and cardiac death occurs when the heart stops beating permanently. In Australia, most organ donations occur after a person is declared brain dead. This means they can't think, feel, respond or even breathe independently. The most likely cause is a bleed in the brain, such as a stroke, resulting in catastrophic irreversible damage. How do you know when somebody's brain dead? Good question. They can often look just like they're asleep. To confirm someone is brain dead, a doctor checks for preconditions and then conducts eight tests to check if the person responds. The tests include touching the person's eye, syringing ice-cold water into their ear, and testing for a cough reflex. These actions cause a response in anyone with brain function, even people in a deep coma. Negative responses to all the tests are required to confirm brain death. All eight tests are then repeated by a second doctor to double check there is no response. It's incredibly thorough. The other pathway to becoming a donor is called donation after cardiac death, DCD. Doctors make every endeavor to help a patient recover. However, in some situations in intensive care, despite all efforts by medical and nursing staff that may have occurred over a number of days, nothing else can be done. Any further treatment would be futile and the only option is end-of-life care. Donation after cardiac death may be possible, but a patient needs to die within a specific time after support is withdrawn. So DCD is a less common way to become a donor. Once a person is pronounced dead, the potential for organ donation becomes a reality, but it's not a done deal. Your organs could still be medically unsuitable for donation. However, if this is the case, you may be able to donate eye, heart, bone and skin tissues instead. Why is it so much harder to donate organs? Criteria for organ donation are strict, but this is necessary to ensure that people receiving the organs have the best chance of survival. Remember, one donor can transform the lives of 10 or more people, and that's why it's really important that every potential donor is recognised. Can I just make my decision and register it online? Why do I need to tell my family? The death of a family member can be a very distressing time. It's important that the people closest to you know your wishes in advance, as it can make the whole process less traumatic. So make sure you have the chat that saves lives. Discover the facts, decide whether you want to be a donor, and discuss your decision with those closest to you.